PH1. He's also from New York. Yeah, Long Island, Long Island. So did you guys know from back then, or you guys kind of met in Korea? Uh, the funny thing is, uh, I, I see. <laughs> Uh, it was my first relationship where I've been uh, conditioned, like I've been, to be honest, mistreated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to the extent where I, I kind of became brainwashed, you know? Mm -hmm. like, so you released it early this month, mm -hmm. and obviously it's about a certain lady, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. After you released it, I'm pretty darn sure she heard it. Oh, uh. Has she ever reached out? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, it's your boy Wine. So today we have a man that I've been wanting to meet for a very long time. And I dare to say he's one of the most underrated artists in the K-Hip-Hop scene. He raps, produces his own music, and even mixes them. So he's very talented, and he's here with me today to share some juice. Please welcome, Yunbi. <laughs> come through, come through sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, What's good? But how have you been? Like, what you up to? Um, yo, I just been uh, hustling, basically. Hustling. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, uh, you know, COVID. <coughs> mm -hmm. Everybody's struggling. Right. Um, everything's being canceled. Right. Shows, performances, and whatnot. Uh -huh. So I'm really trying to venture out into other industries. Yes. Yes. So you know, I've just been you know planting the seeds for my future. Oh, I like that uh, those language right there. Okay. So let's go a little more into about who Yumbi is as an artist. Okay. Because believe it or not. Like a lot of people out there mm -hmm. actually didn't even know that you were Korean American. Oh wow! And the fact that you speak English. So they thought I was Korean. Korean. Literally, yeah. So Ness was kind of like that too. Uh -huh. and the, but I knew that you're Korean American, so I was like, we gotta reveal this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So let me take it back. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But <clears throat> you were raised in America when you were younger, mm -hmm. and then you moved to Korea. Mm -hmm. And then you went back to the U.S. for a high school and college. That is correct. It is correct. Yes. Okay. And then was high school and college both in New York? Because you went to NYU, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I first went to NYU, uh, it was a really big change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was like kind of like a, a culture shock, of even course. within the same state. Of course. You know, everybody's uh, dressed in weird. They're different. They're yeah, very they're different. Yeah, they're very different. Um, and I was, uh, I had no, I had zero <laughs> fashion sense to be honest with you. <laughs> yes. Also. True nerd. Of course. Yeah, so uh, it, it kind of, you know, opened my eye to a whole new world. Uh, area, a whole new world. Nice. Yeah. Then when did you start music? Was that in school or like? So basically, uh, piano was my thing since uh, since a kid, you know, mm -hmm. the, the stereotypical Asians, story. Of course. Yeah, some form of, you know, violin, piano, Of whatever. course. And piano of course. was my thing. Um, I actually uh, well, did pretty well, you uh -huh. know. And, uh -huh. Piano and then in high school mm -hmm. for uh, my uh, freshman year birthday, yeah. uh, my mom got me like the the basic uh, MIDI set, MIDI really? studio set. Um, Could you ask for it or? Um, I asked uh, for some, some kind of musical, you know. Okay. I kind yeah. of wanted uh, the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard. Okay. But she ended up getting like a special pack of guitar center. Okay. Okay. And then it had the MXL. 990 mic, yeah. the Axiom 2025 20, keyboard, right. and a thingy interface. Right. And with my little HP Hewlett Packard laptop, yeah. I just started to get into the world of MIDI. MIDI, okay, not and, rapping, MIDI. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's how I started. And then, um, so actually, uh, rap was not that serious for me. It was just mm -hmm. a way of uh, expressing, just having fun, just freestyling. Right. Right. You know, just turning on beat, people jamming, yeah. somebody on the key, somebody on, you know. So that's how I really got into rap, but it w really wasn't a serious thing for me in, and, in high school. And then did it get more serious in college? Oh uh, yeah, it really um, <coughs> um, like that jo jovial attitude mm -hmm. um, extended until I guess my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, and by that time, I got pretty good at freestyle. Okay. Um, and that's how I really made a lot of new friends, other than uh, the academic friends, mm -hmm. like per se. Um, you know. So so who was the first Korean artist that ever reached out to you then? Like, uh, I, it was Palo Alto. Was it? From like SoundCloud? Um, he heard my SoundCloud, so I'm a, I have to, you know, uh, you know, drop some shout outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's this guy named uh, DJ Macrohard. Okay, DJ Macrohard. Um, yeah, he actually uh, linked me up 
um, with this, I forgot this artist's name, but anyway, Palo Alto was featuring on that track. Okay. And I made the beat for that track. Oh, and then he liked okay. the beat, yeah. and he checked out my SoundCloud. Yeah. And slowly but surely, uh, like, word <coughs> spread, and uh, he DM'd me. Mm. But, you know, um, I was basically uh, known for my beats. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking right now, too, right? Yeah. So how did like you come into Korea work out? So Palo Alto was interested in your beats first of all, right? Yeah, yeah. So did he want to kind of like scout you as like, a producer first? Like how did that whole challenge um, work out? Yeah, so the production company, mm -hmm. like the youngs that I was really close with, mm -hmm. and all the celebrities from Korea, like Gray, mm -hmm. like Jay Park, and yeah, whatnot, yeah. Um, they would always work with them. Of course. And then the youngs would look after me and they would always call me up. Yeah. They're like, Yo, well, Benzino's here. Yeah, well, come but, through. Yeah, Spend it for us. Yeah, Shimmy Twice is here. Okay. Jay Park is here, and they would always introduce me. Yeah. Like, so, this is our guy in New okay. York. This is okay. the guy who's uh, hustling right now with mm. music. So, actually, my very first uh, um, contact with the uh, Korean hip hop yeah. was uh, Jay Park back in. Now, starting big. Uh, back in 2014, I believe. 2015, 2014. You just graduated college at the time then? Uh, I graduated in uh, 2016 because I took a gap year. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, but um, that was my very first, like, you know. Real contact. Yeah, real contact. And I uh, I was there during his video shoot. Okay. And then I remember being like, whoa, he's really good in front of yeah, the camera. And that sure. kind of got me uh, sparked. The, more that, interested that, 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 Yeah, as a player, more than a producer. So that's when I really started to uh, focus on my uh, demo tape mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so all that happened, and then you went into Highlight Records, I believe, 2016, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, Palo Alto finally took you in right after college, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, after I graduated from college, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I was working uh, as an account manager oh. in Wall Street for three months. Okay. And after a while, I just thought, yo, this is very uh, immoral, it's unethical. Mm. Basically, uh, we're charging high APR rates yeah. for, small, for, yeah, for small business owners. Gross. Yeah, so I just thought, this is not, just, this, 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 this is not my thing. It's not what you want to do in life. For sure. Exactly. For sure. So I just quit that job uh -huh. and then hit up Paolo and yeah. said, I'm gonna go to Korea and they say let's meet up. So I came to Korea, okay. went to his studio, yeah. uh, we had a meeting yeah. and surprisingly I was very fortunate enough to have uh, friends in, Co in Korea who are already you know, in the industry. Um, like this is another side story. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, back when uh, uh, none of these people were famous, they yeah. were like Milik. Ah, uh, Milik! Uh, okay. Uh, Imle, we, <coughs> we actually had like a SoundCloud collective that we were gonna, mm. you know, push, but that kind of kind of fell know, apart. Kind of fell apart. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. But through them, you know, I met Pablo, mm. uh, you know, Kush, Kush, etc., uh, etc. Et oh wow! And then um, I kind of had like uh, an optimistic out on like uh, opportunity right. to get into right, the industry. Right, right, right. Back then, it was basically black, the black label, high ground. Yeah, just, that's and true. Highlight. But of those three, Highlight was the most. Um, they really wanted me. Palo Alto really, really wanted me to sign me as a producer. Producer, yeah, as not a producer, as a rapper. Not okay. as a rapper. Okay. Because uh, I first went there to work uh, as a producer. Yeah, yeah of and, course, of course. In, in, in the studio, and then um, uh, that's when I showed him my demo tape. And when I showed him my demo tape, he's like, hmm. Mm. Uh, so uh, do you do you want to be uh, a player as well? Yeah. And I was like, yo, I really want to be a player. Yeah, of course. So that's kind of how it happened. He, he liked your demo enough to actually make you a front end player. Yeah. So that was that demo tape, Runaway Part One, was part of the demo tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, I shot shot the video in uh, half of it in New York mm -hmm. before I came, mm -hmm. and the other half after I got signed mm -hmm. in Korea. Right. So that was kind of how it all happened. Ah, super lit. So you joined Highlight Records, and uh -huh. most recently, just early this month, you released an album. The Break of Archives. Yeah, The Break of Archives. Yes. Very great song. Um, uh, it's like a type of song that makes you want to like go into a dark room, play your music, uh, pour up some wine, drink, and just think about that one girl that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that, 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 that broke your heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how did that album just kind of come about? Like, um, so basically, uh, you know, um, I had a, a big accident last year. Uh, Accident. October, yeah, motorcycle accident. Oh. I was riding a bike 
Um, so I had to be hospitalized for two months. And that was three days. Yeah, that was three days before uh, my first uh, concert in China. And um, wow. it was basically right after Show Me The Money A. Yeah, ended. Yeah, 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 that's kind of when um, the masses, the Korean masses got to know me through yeah. that. Yeah. That was this, a huge moment, basically. Yeah, this battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It still haunts me to this day. I was so sorry, but yeah, you go on. <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> you know, and then um, uh, right after, like, uh, I got out of the hospital, uh -huh. um, I had a breakup, but it was like the most intense breakup ever that I've experienced in my life. Wow. It's the first time I actually shed tears. For a relationship? Yeah, from a, from a breakup from oh, a relationship. Wow. Uh -huh. I've never felt that type of despair and whatnot. And I just got out of the hospital. I had so much energy, so yeah. much creative energy. I had to vent out. That's true. I missed so many, so many opportunities. You did. You know, so I was very frustrated. I really wanted to prove myself musically. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of energy. Of course. And um, it's all true story. It's I'm all sure, true yeah, story. yeah. I could feel it when I was reading yeah. the lyrics. I was like, ah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like the first track, that's literally how it happened. Whoa. She just texted me. Uh, Yo, we gotta think about our relationship, and I'm like, hmm. It's a hitter. Yeah, are we, are we, oh, yeah, but is she serious though? Is she serious? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it kind of came out of the blue. Yeah, I and saw then, your lyrics. Yeah, so you know, it's, it's like literally how it happened, you know, and it's the first time I felt desperate. Yeah. And you know, when you're desperate enough, uh, it doesn't matter sure. who's right or who's wrong. You don't care about that. Yeah, it's just know? love. Yeah, it's just love. Yeah, it's so, true. that album was just so great, and oh, thank you. You had some great featuring lineup as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was Hoodie, mm -hmm. um, there was PH1, yes. and Ready. But one thing I did notice is Hoodie actually featured two of your songs. In yes, the yes. Is Jeez. there like a special reason? Um, It's just uh, very interesting. Enough, uh, I'm not close to Hoodie. Oh, okay. Uh, like, we've never actually met and uh, like even chatted. What? Um, but, uh, you know, uh, in my Wasted 20s EP yeah. on the song Friendship, yeah. um, she really liked my style of uh, production. Uh, okay. So, um, it's, it kind of, the, the chemistry yeah. in terms of the creative chemistry kind of worked. Makes sense. Yeah, so I just sent her some beats. Yeah. Um, Your King Feature, she really loved it. And oh. She just did it. And I still thank, really appreciate her for that. Very right, rare. Right. Damn, so you never even met her, only talked through email, but she still featured two of your songs. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's great, that's great. What about PH1? He's also from New York. Yeah, Long Island, Long Island. So did you guys know from back then, or you guys kind of met in Korea? Uh, the funny thing is, uh, PH1 and I, uh, PH1 Young and I, we've never actually met in New York. Okay. Um, but in Korea, uh -huh. uh, we kind of vibe through Show Me The Money 7. That's true. Um, yes. He's a real chill guy, we click yeah. really well. Yeah. So, I mean, that song with PH1 actually hurt. Like, yeah. That's actually my favorite song in the album. Oh. Like, do you mind if I play like the last part real quick? Of course, you can yeah. play that shit. It was, it was so good. Like, Cause my girl, ex girl, likes to play games. So ah, I see. <laughs> Such a hitter, such a hitter. What is like your favorite part of tracking that album? On uh, that album, it has to be uh, first of all, Gangsta's Cry. Ah, with Ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's because um, when I was recording that song, right, 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 it was right. literally at the lowest point. So um, if you hear, mm -hmm. um, I kind of use a tone. Yeah. Um, like the way I recorded, it, it's not really. Uh, Meticulous. Ah, it's very raw. It's yeah. just like raw emotions. Right. And just uh, it was just me just venting out, venting out the microphone, and you could kind of hear that compared yeah. to the other tracks where I kind of yeah. meticulously, you know, control my tone and all that. It's yes. not bad for that song. So yeah. I like that song a lot. Yeah. yeah. And then you also did say this was your first relationship that you ever shed tear for. So. Exactly. Gangsters cry, guys. I mean, gangsters cry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. sorry, sorry. So one last question about the album. Okay. So you released it early this month, mm -hmm. and obviously it's about a certain lady, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After you released it, I'm pretty darn sure she heard it. Oh, uh... Has she ever uh, reached out or...? Nah, like, uh, cause, uh, you know, um, it's kind of like this, uh, um, Pablo Fuege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, um, uh, it was my first relationship where I've been, uh, 
conditions like I've been to be honest mistreated mm -hmm. uh, to to the extent where I, I kind of became brainwashed you know mm -hmm. like those cases yeah. Yeah. On, of domestic violence for example yeah. it's like a harsh com analogy but yeah. you know yeah. um, you Korean know, dramas guys yeah just yeah <laughs> when, 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 when the uh, husband beats the wife for a long time yeah. at the end of the day the wife defends the husband right, right. Gets, gets attached right so it's kind of like um, I kind of got you know unknowingly attached to the point so where you were the wife and that yeah, yeah, exactly. you're, you're, uh, <laughs> so I kind of that's the okay. first time like uh, like it kind of, once you're already in that state she's good <laughs> yeah she's good she's good yeah. Yeah. so I kind of was uh, the first time uh, mm -hmm. I kind of got overpowered mm. and I didn't even realize that yeah. until it was too late I'm sorry hey you know what yeah. you made a great album through that breakup and yeah. hey, let it be that's let it, it. be yeah. listen to it guys it's really good it hit that subscribe button please Nobody had faith in me. Nobody really? had faith in me because uh, he had already proven what the, this battle was next for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. That moment, it just clicked. Yeah. And it just got me. Uh, you were on fire. Yeah, it's like got me in Super Saiyan mode. <laughs> I can tell in the yeah, un uncut sure. version, uh, I kind of was uh, cussed to the audience. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, How do you think about Gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone thought I was. Uh, Acting. No, but I was. You were real. I was real. I was really you pissed. Like, you were serious when you're fighting that. I day, was man. really pissed. Yeah. Not at Young Me, just at the whole industry. Yeah. And you taking this off, was it all planned? Like, that wasn't planned. It wasn't planned? That was because you thought Young Me said, um, Ness sucked my dick. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Did, you hear, did you hear about the truth though? No, I didn't hear about the truth. Okay, so.